Well, hello there, good morning, and welcome to my little arty corner here upon YouTube. I thought I'd show you to start this particular drawing, which is sideways on because it won't fit on the screen if I put it the other way. But this is the one of seed pods that I did the other day, and I've now coloured it with alcohol markers. Um, let me see if I can get the colour a bit truer to life, as I can see it on the screen. It's very dark and dismal on there. It's not really, the colours are much lighter in person. And I chose sort of like a yellowy green and a darker yellowy green and a darker yellowy green to do the leaves and part and um, the stems on the, the leaves at the bottom, the stems on the seed pod. For the tops and the yellowy goldeny bits, I chose a, a, a yellow orange colour and a yellowy colour, but a warm, rich yellow, not an acid yellow. And um, then for the bits in between, I chose, it was terracotta and oddly, I think it was a rosy pink or a, it's sort of like it's a, a salmon colour and they actually work nicely together. There could be a bit more contrast and I had put some shadow on underneath using some grey greens and you can see the shadows, the drop shadows I've put around these, but there's a subtle hint of shadow in these. It dull, that grey green dulls these colours down just a little bit as well. And um, I'm quite happy with that, though I may add some white dots, maybe, or gold, but I'm going to leave that as it is. So I hope you're doing well. I hope everything's fine in your world and that you're finding time to be creative. I'm going to do something quite quick today because I need to get the template the colouring template for Angela Porter's colouring group book fans, colouring book fans Facebook group. Yeah, uh, they'll be mentioned in the link below. You can't see me, but I'm actually tapping my finger down like this in the link, in the link below. So I do this. I use my hands to talk a lot, which you can't see, which is a good thing, perhaps. So I thought I'd do something quickish today. My mind, as you know, it sort of like wanders around different things. And I had all these lovely flowers that I did yesterday. I think I'm going to use this one here or a slight variation on this triple leaved one. Just on this page, I've already drawn a border out and I'm going to do something. Am I going to do something? No, I'm not. I was going to draw in colour, but I've decided, no, I'm not. But I'm going to dig out, oh, I don't want to know one. <sighs> Welcome to my world. An O3 will do. I'm going to draw a border on this page of that flower because I can and because I've also managed to get ink on me. Great. Um, so I've just drawn a, oh gosh, not a very parallel pencil border because can I find my, my, my pen? Hang on, I've got a ruler here, this will help. Oh gosh, see look at that, oh no, that's really not going to help there. Yeah, that's really skewiffy. So let's just pop that in. It's a bit better. Even though I'll go outside the lines, I still like to start with it roughly the shape I'd like. And I could put other things here. So I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. Middle-ish. That's probably a little bit above middle. So how are you all doing? I hope you're doing well and fine. And that you really are fine and well. And finding that time to be creative. I find drawing, lettering, crocheting, playing music, as in playing music with a musical instrument, incredibly relaxing. And you can even tell that with me here and now. I've made this centre a bit smaller so the shapes are a little bit different. So I'm going to be working in an anti-clockwise direction to draw my spirals. So, draw those in like that. And perhaps up here I'll do one that does have a bigger center. Yes, it's nice to vary the size of these. And perhaps put the petals at a different angle as well. So I'm trying to make these more or less equally equidistant around the circle, but it's no big deal if they're a different distance. Because unless somebody comes along 
with a ruler or some, something else and measures it, they're not really going to know. And as far as I know, for things like this, there are no measuring police. Watch somebody come and comment. They've measured mine and deem it not to be symmetrical or perfect enough. So again, I'm adding these spirals. And I'm drawing that line along the outside of this circle in a clockwise direction. So that's quite nice. So let's do another one down here. Again, I'm going to have my circle inside. So I'm going to pop these ones off at a jaunty angle. Funny word, isn't it, jaunty? I wonder where it comes from. I'll instantly forget that. I don't want to because it's a good word. Luckily, I have a piece of paper here. Jaunty. There we go. And I want to look that up. And I think it'll be lovely to hand letter. Jaunty letters. Right. And for a variation, I'm going to draw these ones. In a clockwise direction like that you know clockwise as in drawing the line in the clockwise direction it's already looking quite jaunty down here okay so add a couple more I have actually got the template drawn I think it's just a case of me adding some color to it and um, I'd like to get that done and then it's I think it's likely to be dry today and it looks like it's that we're getting some sunshine so it would be rather nice to let's head out with my camera because the battery for my camera has charged now and use my big SLR camera for a year or more left the battery in it stupidly um, Luckily, there's no damage, um, but it was just about flat. So, um, charge that up, so reinstall it and we'll be good to go. The other thing is it'll get me out and moving my body somewhat. I'm putting this on the edge of my page here because this may become a like a journal page in here where I can keep track of things. Oh, we're going in that kind of direction, in a clockwise direction with this one as well. So I just thought that would be quite nice, something quite nice to add. There we go, up to the top there. So I realised that... Um, often said about using my sketchbook as a place to keep notes. I mean, I have a commonplace book, but I think in a sketchbook is where I'm most likely to actually pay attention to. And the other thing I need to do today is I had, my brain has just skipped on. Um, I had my sort of like six weekly blood test kit through the post yesterday was um, for a while now I've been taking part in a study where they test for COVID antibodies in your blood to see well what's happening really and antibodies for both vaccinated and unvaccinated so um, all knowledge is important, all scientific knowledge is, as far as I'm concerned, me being a scientist. And uh, so I'm happy to give a few drops of my blood every... It's about six weeks now, it was monthly, but they've eased off a bit. So I don't know how much longer this is going on for. With it as well, it's called Virus Watch. Um, here in the UK 
So once a week, I also have to fill in a questionnaire about my health in the last week and things like whether you've had a vaccine or things like that. So being a scientist, I'm happy to contribute to data um, because it's been properly collected as well. So I need to do that later. So that'll be fun. It's always fun trying to get blood out of me. Can be a bit like getting blood out of a stone sometimes and other times it's sort of like oh my gosh am i ever going to stop bleeding i guess it depends what kind of blood vessel i managed to stab some of them seem to bleed a lot better than others but it's fine all for a good cause here we go I think that is as much as I want to do of these. Now then, I think I'd like to have some things growing out of these and I think I'm going to do some shapes like this. I was in sort of like, not a panic, but yesterday, I wanted to look for a particular lettering book that I have. So I was going through all my bookcases and everything else where I have books stashed and I couldn't find it, but I, st I stumbled along books I'd forgotten I had, which is a common thing with me. Um, I, t I buy books sometimes for a particular book I'm working on as a reference so you know I've got books here of I didn't actually have cats but dogs while I was working on whimsical dogs um, so I've got something to look at things like I've got books of um, seashells and insects and goodness knows what but skulls I've got skulls and skeletons I like a good skull. Um, I haven't drawn one for ages, actually. I got that for Inktober a couple of years back when it was... Um, I didn't do the official Inktober list. I found a separate one. I did a couple, actually. One was mushrooms, again. Something I really love drawing, if you haven't guessed. I haven't done much with mushrooms, have you? They're fun to draw in a whimsical manner. So a lot of my work is very whimsical, very stylized, and often an element of whimsy in it. And um, I found a book. I didn't even realise I had it. I must have. I must have bought it for a reason. But by Elena James. Elena is Y E L L. Elena. ANA, I think it is, or ENA, James. Amazing, amazing abstract art, um, but botanical, absolutely beautiful. And this is a kind of motif that she uses often in her work. So. And then late last night, I went, oh, I know exactly where those book, that book, or those books I was looking for were. They're on my Kindle app. But I don't look at it on my Kindle because um, they're in beautiful colour and the Kindle is in black and white. So, yeah. So there we are. It's a nice bordery edge there or edgy border. And I think the only thing I want to do with this, and I will turn it back the other way because it's easier for me to work this way round, is I am going to pop behind all of this I'm first going to outline this with this micron I'm going to draw the lines where I want them to be but I am not going to fill this in with any pattern or anything I want black there I think I want black I could I was there my head was going oh I could use alcohol markers no Angela you can't not on this paper it goes straight through and it would most probably go straight through to the other side as well. 
or to the next page, if not the next page beyond that. So we're not doing alcohol, but it's okay because I have my rather battered touch pen, Pentel touch. Yeah, I've worn the pointy bit off and it's still a bit flexible, but nowhere near as it was when it was uh, new. So it's just like an extra thick pen now. Oh, look at that. That's come off. I've only put that in with washi tape because I haven't um, the the seed pod drawing because um, I haven't scanned it in yet, but I'm, I'm going to. That's one of my jobs shortly. And I'm happy to just um, do that. So I'm going to spend just a little bit of time adding some black and then I'll finish this off camera and come back or perhaps I won't. So, you know, it's only taken me about 15 minutes or so to draw this. Well, the video itself is 15 minutes, 16 minutes now long ish. And that includes the waffle at the beginning. Good at waffling. It's a skill like any other. But I just think this black background behind it. And I do want bits spilling out of this um, shape. I like that. I like that things can spill out. It really does look to them like they're growing and they're deciding they want to escape. So while I'm doing this, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say thank you to you all. Um, if you're new here, you are most welcome. And to all my subscribers, thank you very much. And welcome to the new ones. I'm glad you decided to subscribe and to hopefully keep returning for different, you know, for the various contents that I produce. Um, very, very humbled, I think, by how many people have subscribed now. I think I'm over 600 or about 600, which is amazing. Because when I started the YouTube channel, I didn't expect to get any. Um, and I think it's taken me a long while to find my, my video voice, shall we say, my YouTube voice, the style of art to do here. It's not everything I do, you know, interests everybody. So trying to keep things here that you will have interest in has been a learning experience for me. And I will still make mistakes, I've still messed things up, and that's fine, because that's called being human. So, so I'd just like to say thank you for that, and also for all the likes and the lovely, lovely comments that you leave. Because it's really nice to know whether you leave a comment or not, just by liking the video, you let me know that the content's good enough. You know, just think about it like that. Yep, that's good enough. I'll give it a like. That's what I try to remember to do when I'm watching YouTube videos myself. So, yeah, that was good. I'll give it a like. Because, uh, well, yeah, that was interesting in parts. That's good enough. Let's give it a like. It may not be cinematic or I don't don't do editing. My head just cannot cope with unless it's a very simple kind of edit like um, I could have stopped here and said right I'll come back when I finished filling all of this in with black but then I wouldn't have had this little chat with you. Um, So then I get a series of sections which are easy enough to put together. But uh, other than that, I just can't. My head just doesn't work in that way. And it's it's not that it wouldn't work in that way. It's just that it can't anymore. I was talking with a friend yesterday. And we both have problems reading and retaining what we've just read. And I even have trouble sometimes understanding what I've just read. It makes no sense to me. I'm reading it. The words are there, but I actually can't understand what they are. And they could be really simple words. 
and um, I used to love, 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 love reading. I could get through a book a day. And if it was a really good book, I'd lose sleep over it because I wanted to finish it. But then I burnt out. I crashed. I had a breakdown or whatever you want to call it. And I could no longer read. For a long time, I couldn't retain information. You know, if I needed to read something important, I'd have to read it out loud to myself. In fact, I still have to do that. It's so debilitating, in, you know, for me. And it was something that gave me so much pleasure is now just a frustration. But bit by bit, I'm getting better at it. Um, I read a couple of pages of a book yesterday. Can't tell you what it was about, mind you, because I can't remember. If I'd bought the audio book, I most probably would, because audio books have been fantastic. So I can still listen to stories and, um, you know, stories all non-fiction. And I can play it again and again and I don't get so frustrated because if I'm doing art, I'll forget what I'm doing. Um, I'll forget what I'm listening to and I go, oh, I missed that bit. Rewind. Because I can't possibly read and do art at the same time, I'm afraid. So... So there you are, just a little bit about me. Now that looks, I like that. That's a nice edge to this page, isn't it? I think so. Okay, I could do with some shadows and things in here, but you know what? I think I'm just going to go and get a fine micron. And I'm just going to do some details here. This isn't the best black colouring in, but it is a sketchbook, so we're okay. And I know I've got the pencil to remove, but I won't do that until this ink has completely dried. Um, it doesn't take long, but the paper's so absorbent that I just want to make sure that um, every last bit of the, the ink has dried so that when I erase the pencil lines, we don't smudge them. So I guess if in Zentangle terms, this is kind of an extended, long, kind of weird flux. But it's definitely a kind of motif that... Well, I've used for a long, long time. And then when I found the y Elena James's work, I went, oh, you use that too. Because there is nothing entirely unique in this world, I think. It's how we put things together. So this is how I'm putting this one together. So I think I'll pop some lines in the centres here just to add some interest and to break that up. Tidying lines up as I go along as well, because I have really done this very, very quickly. And I'm cool about that. And this one I'll put some lines in the middle and a dot in the center. The other thing I want to do something with are these, the triple circles I've put round each of the central ones. Yes, and I think I'll just put dots in the middle of them, just to add some interest there. Okay, let's have a look. We're getting there, nearly done. I think I know what I could use on here to add some shadow. Not, I have actually got, I've got that one, but I also have my older one, which I might use. I've got a grey Tombow for Denisuki pen. So rather than use graphite or whatever, I'm going to use some grey around these to add some shadow. Not worrying about the little balls if I go over those, so be it. So 
so that's fun and I think I'll need to add some shadow underneath some areas where bits overlap so we've got an overlap here so we can do that that would be an overlap this would be a kind of overlap as will that there's an overlap here that's an overlap as well just checking for overlaps there's another one here up here there's one there there's another one there Okay, let's put a drop shadow with the bits that hang out as well. Hang out. They're hanging out together. Fresh air and sunshine. And with these I'm sticking to the bottoms and the left. Because that is how I tend to add shadows. I've done for a long, long time. So it's natural for me to do that. It's really hard for me to do it the other way around now. I want to stop and think. So that's okay. I've got that one that needs some shadow, as do these. As does that one. That one, perhaps. Some there and there. 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 A little bit there. A little bit there. That's under, but a little bit on the top side there. And I think, I think that's almost overlapping that. So let's give that, that's definitely overlapping there. You can see I'm just going back and double checking because I wasn't very methodical about how I did this. Okay, and then for the centers here, in the centers, I'm just going to pop a shadow underneath that central bit just to lift that up to the left and under and then to the top of these to the top and right and where some of my shadows are a bit clunky at the ends I'm glad I chose the Tombow because I can I can change that thickness of the, the line quite easily so I think that will actually do it. What do you think? Just simple black and white. And then I've got all this page to write on or do anything else that I want to do. If I've got a picture to put here, so for example, if I take this one out because it's hanging out, then if it was smaller, I could pop that there and perhaps do some writing with it or create something to go here. I don't know. I'll just pop it back for now. Washi tape. Yeah, great. So I hope you like that. Quick video, because I've got things to do. And let me know. Oh God, I'll tell you what. I have, You can tell I'm rushing more than I rush usually. I'm just seeing little spots like that where it's a bit untidy. But on the whole, I think that's quite lovely. And it will look nice there. So put a quote there anything really quotes are good or thoughts and ideas or whatever so there we are right so i'll say thank you for joining me if you've enjoyed this thumbs up for me please if you like what you've seen and you haven't subscribed please do and a request that if you know anybody else that would like this kind of work or this these kinds of videos or this kind of instruction or tutorial this is a bit of a one today, but it, you know, tried to speak my thoughts out and the thought processes, then please share my video with others. All right. So until we speak again, take care, look after yourselves and above all else, well, as well, find time to be creative. Bye, Hoyle. Bye.